Welcome back. It's time to talk about Extrema, or some people will say Extrema. It doesn't really matter. I learned it Extrema, so that's how I'm going to say it throughout this video, but do be aware that some people do pronounce it differently. Now, Extrema is basically just a fancy way of saying maximums and minimums on a function, or in this case, on an interval. And there are four different types of Extrema. We've got an absolute maximum, which sometimes will be called a global maximum, and that is going to be the highest point on your function, or the highest point on an interval for a function and that of course is referring to the y value of that point. So if you can find a point that has the largest y value out of any other points that would be your absolute maximum and we will look at examples of this in a little bit. The second type of extrema is the absolute minimum and this is also sometimes called the global minimum and this is just the lowest point on a graph or the point with the smallest y value, whether that be on a function or just part of a function on an interval. Now we have our third type, which is a relative maximum. And sometimes this is called a local maximum. And this is a point that is the highest point in a certain area of a function. And then we have our fourth type of extrema, which is the relative minimum. And this is the lowest value in a certain area of a function. And again, this is sometimes called a local minimum. And so let's look at this graph we have right here. Let's see if we can find each one of these four types of extrema on this graph to help us understand what exactly these are and how we can find them. So let's start with our absolute maximum. This is going to be the point where our graph has the highest y value. Now you'll notice that this graph here is closed. We have two endpoints, right? So this function does not continue past those points. It has a starting point and an ending point. And so if we look at it here, it looks like this point right here is the highest along the y axis out of all the points that we could possibly have. So this is going to be our absolute maximum. So we'll have absolute maximum. And so then what about an absolute minimum? Well, the absolute minimum is going to be the point on a function where it is the lowest y value. So down here, which would be this point, right? This point has the lowest y value out of any other point along this function. And so we would call this the absolute minimum. And so what does that say about these two points? Because this is not an absolute maximum because this is the absolute maximum. You can only have one absolute maximum and one absolute minimum but you can have multiple relative maxes and relative mins. And what exactly are these? Well, this would be a relative max. And let me explain why. If you notice, I'll just write relative max here. If you notice all the points around this point are lower than it. So every time you see like a little hump, this is essentially where you have a relative max. So you have all these values increasing, increasing, and then you have the peak and then it decreases again. So this is the maximum for this general area of the function. In the same way, this point right here is the minimum for this general area. So we would call this the relative minimum because notice around this point, our values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but then they stop here and then they get larger again. They get larger all the way up to our relative max. And so this is a relative minimum because it is the lowest point in this general area, but it's not the absolute minimum because there is a point later on that is lower. So hopefully this makes sense and kind of helps you understand how we find relative extrema and absolute extrema. Now, not all functions are going to have absolute extrema, right? We're not always going to have a absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. For example, take a look at the function here, f of x equals x squared plus two. If you look at this graph here, we see that at the bottom, we do have an absolute minimum, right? This point, this point of zero, two would be our absolute minimum. And that's because there's going to be no point on this graph for this function that is going to get lower than this point right here. This is the lowest y value for any point in this entire graph. Now, on the other hand, this function does not have an absolute maximum because this function will go on forever and ever, right? You can't just pick out a point and say, well, that's the highest it's ever going to go because you could just keep picking larger and larger values on this graph because the graph isn't going to end in the positive y direction. You could just keep finding points with larger and larger y values. And so you can kind of see why we have the need to close off our functions. So take a look over here where we have the same function but now just on the interval from negative one to two, including those two points. And now we have just this function, right? We have cut off all the values that are not between negative one and two. And so now we do have an absolute maximum, right? We still have the absolute minimum right here at zero two. We have the absolute minimum there. 
but now we also have an absolute maximum at 2, 6, right? So this would be our absolute maximum just for this function on this interval, right? The moment you get rid of this interval and go back to this original function, you no longer have that maximum. So you can kind of see why in order to guarantee that we have a maximum or a minimum, we have to close our function on an interval. And so that brings us to the idea of the extreme value theorem. This might be a theorem that you come across and it's just kind of useful to know. It says that if a function f is continuous on a closed interval from a to b, right, that could be any two numbers, it could be zero to two, zero to three, it could be negative one to four, whatever, right? On some interval, then that function has both a minimum and a maximum on the interval, which is what we just saw here with our graph. We saw that x squared plus two did not have a maximum, although it did have a minimum, it did not have an absolute maximum until we closed it on an interval. In this case, we went from negative one to two. And so now I want to revisit our original graph from the very beginning of this lesson. And what I want you to see here is everywhere where there is a relative maximum or a relative minimum or just relative extrema in general, the slope at that point is going to be zero, right? And so if we were to look at the tangent line at that point or at this point, our relative minimum, we would see that that tangent line, which takes the slope of that point, is got a slope of zero. It's a straight line. When you have a horizontal line, the slope is zero. And so this is going to be very important for us to identify where some relative max and mins might be without necessarily having to see the graph. And the only exception to this would be functions that have points that are non-differentiable. For example, if we have the function, the absolute value of x, you know that you cannot take a derivative of this function at the value of x equals zero because of this sharp point, right? This point has no slope, but this would be a minimum on this function. And so although x equals zero is a non-differentiable point on this function, it still is an extrema or a minimum for this function, even though the slope at that point is not zero. And so everywhere where we have a relative max or a relative min, where that slope is going to be zero, we are going to call the x value of those points critical numbers, which leads us to the definition of what a critical number is. And then we'll get right into the examples of how this is even useful in a little bit. So we have that if a function is defined at some point C and the derivative at that point is equal to zero, right? If we take the derivative of our function, we plug in that value of C, whatever it happens to be, and we get zero, or the function is not differentiable at that point C, then C is a critical number of the function. That's what a critical number is. So when I say critical number, just know that it is a point where either the function is not differentiable or the slope is zero. And so if we wanna find extra on an interval without having to draw the graph of our function, we should find the critical values by setting the derivative of our functions equal to zero and solving for our values of x where the slope is zero. And so that's going to lead us to our general process of how we find extrema on an interval. Let's take a look at the guidelines. And so here are the guidelines to finding extrema on a closed interval A to B. So the first step is going to be to find all those critical numbers on that interval. Now you'll notice that we have parentheses instead of brackets. That just means you're just looking for the critical numbers between your two endpoints, not including them. And then you're going to evaluate each of those critical numbers that you found on that interval on the function, right? So you're just gonna plug in those values of x to see what your value of y is. And then you're going to evaluate your function at each of your endpoints for that interval as well, because your endpoints are also going to have the potential to be the max or min or an extrema on your closed interval. And the reason why you evaluate the endpoints is to get their y values as well. And so then what you're going to do is you're going to compare the y values that you got from plugging in your endpoints into your function and the y values you got from plugging in your critical numbers and see which ones have the highest y value and the lowest y value. The least value is going to be your minimum and the greatest value is going to be your maximum. And so let's finally take a look at one example here of how this process looks. And then if you wanna see more examples, I'll have an example video at the end for you to watch. All right, so here's our example. We have find the absolute extrema of the function f of x equals negative x squared plus three x on the interval zero to three. So what we're going to do here is if we follow our guidelines, the first thing we want to do is find our critical numbers for this function f of x. And the way we do that is we take the derivative of this function, we set it equal to zero, and we solve for values of x. 
right? So the first step here is going to be to take the derivative. So we'll have f prime of x is equal to the derivative of negative x squared plus 3x. So that's going to be negative 2x, right? If we use our power rule, we're going to be multiplying by this 2 to get negative 2x. And then, of course, we subtract 1 from our exponent to just be left with x to the first power. And then the derivative of 3x is just 3. All right, and so now we can set this equal to 0. We'll have 0 equals negative 2x plus 3. And now we're going to solve for x. So if we add 2x to both sides, we will then have 2x equals 3. And if we divide both sides by 2, we'll have x equals 3 halves. So that's going to be our critical value for this function. And so our next step is to evaluate this critical number on this function. And so if we do that, we'll have f of 3 halves, and that's going to be equal to negative 3 halves squared plus 3 times 3 halves, right? All we did here is plug in that critical number we found into the original function f of x. And now we can evaluate. This will be equal to negative 9 fourths plus 9 halves, and that will be equal to 9 fourths. So that's going to be the evaluation of 3 halves. Now, we're not done yet. We also need to evaluate or check our endpoints to see if they are the greatest or the lowest values on this interval for this function. So we'll also plug in 0. So we'll have f of 0, and that's going to be equal to negative and then 0 squared plus 3 times 0. And that's just going to be 0, right? We're going to have the 0 here, and 3 times 0 is 0. So that's equal to 0. And then if we plug in our other endpoint, 3, we're going to have f of 3, and that is going to be equal to negative 3 squared plus 3 times 3, and that will be equal to negative 9 plus 9, which is also equal to 0. So now we have all of our y values to compare. We plugged in our critical number that we found, and we plugged in our endpoints into our function. And so now we have our three y values to compare. So our critical number had the largest y value of 9 fourths, right? The other two values gave us zero, which is the lowest, right? So each of these two points are actually going to be our minimums. And then our critical number, 3 halves, is going to be our maximum. So in this case, x equals 3 halves is our maximum and x equals zero and x equals three are our minimums. And so that would be the answer to this problem. We now know for this interval, our extrema. We know that we have a maximum at x equals 3 halves and a minimum of the same value at x equals 0 and x equals 3, right? If one of these two values was different, let's say this one was negative 1 for some reason, then that would have been the minimum, and then this value would have just been nothing, right? So since these were the same value and they're both the lowest, both of these points were our minimum. And so while you can't have two absolute extrema, meaning you can't have two minimums or two maximums of different values, you can have two absolute minimums or maximums if they have the same y value. So since x equals 0 and x equals 3 both had the y value of 0, they are both allowed to be the absolute minimum. So I just want to make sure that it was clear because I did say earlier that you could only have one absolute max or min. I hope that makes sense. And so with that, that's all I had for this lesson of finding extrema on an interval. If you do want to see some more examples of this process, I will have an examples video linked at the end of this video as well as in the description. I believe I mentioned that already, but you can go check that out for some more examples. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.